when the referee is that concerned, when there's that amount of blood, and you're in That's shots. gonna do it. Nice work. This guy's a big problem at 155 pounds. He is Armand Sarukian. Hello and welcome to Eurowatch. Well, this is the final fight night of 2022, and we have a good crop of Europeans looking to climb the ranks. I'll start with a co-main event, which is a very highly skilled bout in the lightweight division between Armand Sarukian and Demir Ismagulov. Both of these men were involved in super close fights last time out this year, and I am so excited to see them both back. Apparently, there weren't many takers to square off with either of these men, so we're left with number nine versus number 12. More numbers for you, and just to give you a sense of what we're dealing with here, Ismagulov is staring at a 20 fights win streak with a win this weekend. For 155, that is seriously impressive. Half of his wins are by knockouts, only one submission, the rest by decision. On the other side, Sarukian has won five of his last six. Some might argue against that result against Gamrot, leaving his last loss to the current champ, Islam Makhachev. And he has also collected four performance bonuses. Out of 18 wins, he has seven knockouts and five submissions. And lastly, the Armenian Russian resident is just 26 years old. These guys know one another, and their teams will have plenty of information upon which to build a strategy. They trained in the same room at Tiger Muay Thai, and both fighters enjoy visiting American top team. For this camp, it was Isma Gulov that went to the US, and Sarukian to Thailand. This is a well-matched fight. No wonder it's difficult to match these guys. But after this contest, there will be no denying the winner big, big fights. Sarukian has fought in a main event, that was last time out, and gained valuable five round experience, which I think will come in handy as Ismagulov has a high fight IQ. You don't win 11 out of 24 wins on the scorecards if you're reckless and without a strategy. Sarukian has been saying he's worked on his freestyle wrestling ahead of this contest. The offensive wrestling he has already displayed in the octagon has turned heads. However, Ismagulov built his win streak on the Russian scene where he has been tested in these ranges. He has since beaten back strong grapplers in the UFC as well. The young man from Armenia has put it out there that he wants to be the very first man to finish the Kazakh fighter and in doing so, it'll launch him towards big fights and an eventual rematch with Makhachev. Ismagulov is looking to earn the affections of the worldwide audience this weekend and cement his name amongst the top contenders. Get ready to witness a very high level fight where a new title contender will emerge. Well, the Shashin's wild guy, as I said, I'll be still in this fight. Oh, that'll do it! Another man yet to hit his fighting and physical prime is Michal Oleksiejczuk. The 27-year-old fighter still flies under the radar somewhat. Not one for the media, it seems he saves his greatest impressions for the Octagon, where he has netted four first-round knockouts in his time with the UFC. Originally set to face Albert Durayev, he now gets Cody Brundage, a somewhat similar opponent in that grappling is their strong suit. But whoever it is, one thing is for sure, Oleg Shaychuk will be bringing with him that hammer of a left hand. Behind a four ounce glove, it has taken down many 205ers, and he proved last time out that the power is still there at middleweight as he floored the rugged Sam Alvey twice before the referee stepped in. Brundage showed he perhaps has power to match in his last bout after a TKO over Treshawn Gore. These boys will light up the apex when they start throwing down in the main card opener, but will the Polish man finish the year proving he is a prospect at 185? And there it is, the long blue job. And that's the tap! Clear as day, Corey McKenna. In the featured bout, the Welsh flag will be flying as Corey McKenna looks to extend her win streak in the strawweight division. In August, she got her trajectory back towards the top by submitting Miranda Granger and becoming the first woman in the UFC 
to land a Von Flu choke. It was just the response McKenna was looking for after a disappointing result in London. But after returning to the West Coast, she seemingly created Corey 2.0 and now looks to build upon that success. Part of that process this camp was venturing over to San Diego to join in with Angela Hill and Jessica Panay, two women who can offer so much to a young fighter. McKenna will welcome back Cheyenne Velismus, who hasn't fought in a year. Much like her foe, Velismus is a Contender Series graduate who has been tipped for big things. She recently spoke of her intentions to end fights, and I'm sure she'll be eager to act on that with her awaited return this weekend. That's a wrap for this episode. Enjoy the final event of the year. I'll be putting together my top moments for European fighters before the year's end, so look out for that. Until then, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and be well. See you soon.